Uh, get the y'all get on this side. We're gonna have to push it backwards. No, we're not. I'm trying to push it off of my car. Then it's gonna be tore up and worse. <laughs> Let us get going. This is an everyday thing. Yeah, I probably don't have enough gas. And the starter's gone out of it, so you gotta do this every time you wanna leave in that car. And we was just going to the gas station. They pulled us over and they wrote me a seatbelt ticket and it come out to be $41. I didn't have no money to pay, so they charged me $10 to put me on JCS probation. And JCS, it, I don't get why they're in the picture. This is between me and the courts, not another uh, another business. There is an entire industry devoted to making money off of people who can't pay. Normally, an offender is put on probation to make sure that they're not posing a threat to public safety if they're not going to be put into prison. But we see a lot of courts really just hiring probation companies because they want to hire a debt collector and calling it probation. Judicial Correction Services is a private company that allegedly provides private probation services. Essentially, they're a collection agency. Private probation companies don't charge the courts they work for. Instead, they bill the people they supervise directly in fees every month that they're on probation. That's how they make profits. We found widespread abuses plaguing this whole industry, ignoring evidence that people are actually making heroic efforts to pay down their debts. Is this all the money you got? All of it. Being poor has never been a crime in this country. And yet, we are still throwing people into prison for owing money and not paying it back. I've heard people going to jail for not paying their fines. That's one thing around here that will get you in jail quick is not paying your probation. They will come get you for that quicker than not paying your child support. Probation is supposed to be a way to keep people out of prison who don't really belong there. Private probation really turns all of that on its head. It's essentially a debtor's prison. Pretty much all of uh, Columbiana's in there. And just about everybody I know has had to and still are going through it. Yeah, every time you go to court it's like a family reunion. One of the really perverse things is that often the poorest communities are the best markets for them. In a place where people really struggle, people wind up on probation in large numbers and for very long periods of time, and that translates into big money and fees for probation companies. So when profit becomes the driving force, civil rights get thrown under the bus. That's just about as far as I can get it from the inside. I have to have help getting it the rest of the way. Columbiana is a very small town. Is just a lot of land and roads, and then like what stores we do have, there's not really that many. Um, I've applied for Fred's, Piggly Wiggly, Target. I would love to have a job. I'm, this is why I'm not broke all the time. JCS adds on $35 every month, even if you're making progress on it or not. It's almost impossible when you are 17 with no income. I live with my mom and my sisters and my two nephews, and my mom is on disability. She pays all of the bills, and if she can give me anything, she will give me a little bit to put towards my ticket, but there's usually not much left. It no, is very hard. $40 is very hard to come by. And once you get $40 or something like that around here, usually you put that in gas to get where you need to be. We're looking at offenders who would not be on probation at all if they had more money. They wind up actually paying more than the person of means over time and is faced with the continual risk of incarceration if they fall behind on their payments. Here is the actual ticket I got, paid $10, fees $35, and then fine balance $41. And it shows that it went towards my fees and my fines stayed the same. And then this one right here shows I paid another $10. It shows that the fees went down, but fine is still $41. I've told the judge that I have the money to pay for the ticket, and I couldn't afford the rest of the fees, and he said that that wasn't his problem, that I could just put that $41 towards the probation. And then I got another one that shows I paid $41 even, 
and the fine has not been touched, not one time all the money I've paid. And see this paper right here, it says a payment is needed. If you fail to appear, a warrant will be issued for your arrest. A lot of companies in the private probation industry are run by people who are former law enforcement. JCS is run by a man named Robert McMichael, who is a former sheriff and U.S. Marshal. And there's no question that those connections often pave the way to them getting the business that they get. The system is horribly broken. If you can't pay, you're poor, then you're going to be placed in the hands of JCS, threatened with jail, and in many times, jail. Hundreds of people locked up. A thousand people every month in Alabama because they can't afford simply failing to pay. To pay. They don't want to take the point. It was either pay or go to jail. They threatened me with jail. It's not me refusing to pay these tickets because I pay them. New York Times, quote, there are real constitutional issues at stake. There are two federal lawsuits that are going on against JCS. We're challenging that whole system, the fact that these people were indigent, that they were forced to pay additional funds, and then were ultimately jailed because they couldn't pay these fines that were demanded by JCS. I have to go back to court and I have to figure out how to come up with half of it right then and I cannot leave the building until I do or I will be locked up. I'm not trying to get out of my ticket. I was guilty. I deserved the ticket. But all this probation fees they tack on, I can't afford it. And I just, I'd really like to be able to just pay it and get, be done with it. Georgia passed a law transferring probation services to the counties, and that allowed them to privatize their probation services for misdemeanor crimes. Put behind bars for being poor. That's how a group of local attorneys describe arrest warrants requested by Sentinel Offender Services for misdemeanor offenders. We're all basically low income. They live paycheck to paycheck. My husband and I, we've been married 32 years. Uh, we have two daughters, and that's my younger daughter when she was probably about five. In 2006, I was pulled over for DUI. I was sentenced to Columbia County. I sat there for eight months. Sentinel put me on two years probation. 2008, my probation was over. I paid my fine. In 2012, Labor Day weekend, a police officer pulled in. I was walking my dogs around the front of that trailer. The officer come in here and he got out and he asked me to stop. And then he come back saying there was a hold on me in Columbia County. And I said, for what? And he said, violation of probation. I'd been off probation for four years. I said, no, officer, I believe you're making a really bad mistake. He says, well, I still have to take her in. And that's when I sat in Columbia County for 20 days. Judge Danny Craig asked Sentinel, uh, why is she still on probation when she was off four years ago. And they had took it upon themselves to reinstate me without a judge's order or anything back on probation just to get the monthly fee. And he, he sent me home. I was off. I was off of it. But my husband still had to pay $156. Yeah, it makes you scared. You wonder about going in a grocery store or just out walking your dog. Some police officer might come by and arrest you again. I do realize I shouldn't have been drinking and driving and that I did make a mistake and I did pay for it. But they want to drag it out and drag it out just for their profit. And there's so many out there that they're using like that. A disabled Augusta veteran locked up because he couldn't pay a fee. A ticket that turned into jail time and blame Sentinel Offender Services. Three people currently jailed in Richmond County are joining the legal fight against Sentinel. About 10,000 Richmond County residents with outstanding arrest warrants taken out by Sentinel. When I walked out of the courtroom after that 20 days, a lawyer was waiting outside for me. And he said, you know, they were holding you illegally. And uh, I'd like to really talk to you. So here we are talking about a lady who stayed in the Columbia County Jail now for about 20 days at $50 a day. It cost the county $1,000. It cost the lady her freedom. So Sentinel could collect $157. I mean, that's what we're dealing with.
Sentinel is a big company, but it's family held. The owner of the company is Bob Contestable. His son, Mark, is largely responsible for running the company's for-profit probation business out of Georgia. Many company officials are quite eager to blame the courts. The reality is that they have an enormous amount of discretion in their day-to-day -day interactions with the people that they supervise. And many of the decisions they make are not done in consultation with the courts at all. There's a lot of power that the courts delegate, sometimes improperly, to these companies. But the companies have a very direct responsibility for all of this as well. Wave for the camera. She just got married. She's got back from the Caribbean. So I must pay them okay, because they can do that, right? <laughs> Dale Allen, I'm the Chief Probation Officer of Athens Clark County Probation Services. Overall, I've been in the criminal justice field for over 35 years. One of the contributing factors to us deciding to transition from private probation to governmental probation was a request of the judges for uh, more accountability, more transparency. We do believe we're 100% transparent. All my records are open, my fines, my fees, where the money goes, my budget is open record. I don't feel any pressure whatsoever to collect a certain amount of fees. We are not here to make a profit. The concept of locking people up for money goes against every instinct I have as a uh, manager of probation. I actually call it the economics of doing the right thing. If they cannot pay, legitimately cannot pay, then it's to our community's best interest, it's to my government's best interest to work with them any way you can short of incarcerating them. I think that most people like to imagine that in 21st century America there's no such thing as a debtor's prison anymore. That's not true. There are people in courts all across this country losing their freedom not just because they're not able to come up with the money to pay down a fine, but because they're falling behind on payments to a private for-profit company that's been allowed to collect fees from them. JCS, Sentinel, their interest is to make money, not to serve the judicial system. Without question, the most urgent need is for laws at the state level that impose strict oversight and accountability on these companies and the situations where they can and should not be able to collect fines from people. They don't, they don't show like they care about people. Even if you, you're trying, you know, to do what's right. They don't help nobody, they don't, I mean, they, there's really no purpose but just for them to get money. We have to go by the laws, and I feel they ought to too. Who do they have to answer to for doing wrong?